Okay, welcome everybody. And um, this is the, the second webinar in this series of workshops on Indigenous Peoples Food Systems, Biocultural Heritage and the SDGs. And uh, the workshop consists of four webinars and um, we very much hope that many of you can participate in all of them. So um, before we start, I'm gonna briefly go over the objectives of the workshop for those who, people who weren't here with us on Friday. So first of all, we want to promote an inclusive intercultural dialogue because we have a range of participants, uh, university academics and indigenous peoples from several countries. And we'd like to explore the role of indigenous food systems in achieving the sustainable development goals. And today we're gonna to focus on indigenous food systems in China, India, and Kenya. And thirdly, we want to identify the priorities for research um, that indigenous peoples feel are important, but also that address interdisciplinary research gaps. And we'll be doing that tomorrow in the third webinar. And then we also um, are going to explore uh, methods for research, interdisciplinary methods and decolonizing research methods. That will be the final webinar on Thursday. And finally, the objective is, is to build new networks and partnerships uh, for research on indigenous food systems from the field to the plate. So um, just to kick off with a little bit of background and a summary of the discussion on Friday, Indigenous peoples represent most of the world's cultural diversity, uh, over 4,000 languages, and are the custodians of about 80% of the world's biodiversity. But this biocultural diversity is facing unprecedented threats. Um, over 20 languages are lost every year, according to UNESCO, and the Aichi biodiversity targets of 2020 will not be met, the UN has recently announced. And indigenous peoples across the world continue to suffer from colonization by dominant cultures in different ways and from racial discrimination and marginalization. So that is the background. Um, in terms of the key messages, um, overall, the key message was that indigenous food systems are critical for achieving SDG 2 on zero hunger, but also other SDGs. On sustainability, uh, indigenous people's food systems are vital for food security because they sustain the natural resource base rather than depleting it. And um, as Jon Fernandez de Larinoa from FAO said, food, food systems will not be able to feed humanity in a sustainable way and that, unless they are redesigned with a much stronger focus on environmental considerations. Modern farming systems focusing on a narrow set of crops have eroded genetic diversity and indigenous knowledge, which are vital to achieve sustainable food systems. We also heard how indigenous peoples sustain wild crop relatives that they use to enrich domesticated populations of crops in home gardens in the Philippines and also in the Potato Park Biocultural Heritage Territory in Peru. On resilience, we heard how indigenous food systems are part of the solution in the fight against climate change. Uh, that was a key message from the FAO expert seminar in 2008. And we heard how native varieties in Peru have proved vital for confronting climate change impacts in the Andes. We heard that indigenous food systems are also vital as a safety net during other crises like the COVID crisis not only for the farmers in rural areas, but also for people in urban areas. And we heard from Simon Mitambu uh, from the Taraka tribe in Kenya, how indigenous seeds have helped to lessen the impact of COVID by bringing people together through ceremonies so they help each other. And how COVID-19 has led to a revival of traditional foods in his area in, in Kenya. On nutrition and health, we heard from Harriet Kuhnlein how indigenous foods can provide more nutritious diets and the importance of considering their contribution not only to physical health, but also to spiritual, social and mental health. Women in the Potato Park explained that the food they prepare is also medicine, not only for food. And women play a key role in, in transmitting the cultural values that underpin indigenous food systems. 
We need more research on the nutritional quality of indigenous foods and also metrics uh, for nutritional quality, not just food quantity. On cultural heritage, we heard from Simon Mitambo that indigenous seeds are sacredness, that indigenous seeds and food systems are important for identity, spirituality, social cohesion, and that most of the work is on indigenous food systems is collective. In Peru, um, Kenya potato park experts, sorry, Quechua potato park experts, <laughs> explain their food security and rich biodiversity is sustained through ancestral values of solidarity, reciprocity and balance. They explain the ILU concept where the human, the wild or natural and the sacred worlds have to be in balance for them to achieve well-being. And their culturally rooted food system provides a genetic reserve for, for the global community and for future generations. It sustains over a thousand native potato cultivars. So on the challenges facing indigenous people's food systems, we, we heard from Joji Carino, an indigenous um, representative from the Philippines, that mainstream economic development and modern agriculture have overtaken traditional farming in many indigenous communities. And there have been rapid changes in food, diets and nutrition in Asia. In Thailand, farmers can be imprisoned for rotational or swidden farming because there has been a misconception that they cause deforestation and forest laws do not recognize their rights to live in protected areas. And we also heard how special cultural zones in Thailand have, have revived local economies and biocultural heritage. Um, and however, promoting markets for heritage rice has led to an undermining of agrobiodiversity. In Africa, the big push for hybrids and chemicals are undermining soils and water. And there is a lot of arm twisting we heard between governments and agribusiness corporations. So it's hard to promote laws that support indigenous people's food systems. And there are huge power imbalances underlying these policies and colonial laws promoting seed patenting undermine collective seed systems. In the potato park, we heard that the communities are very worried about the government promoting GM crops that will contaminate their huge genetic diversity and they're organizing to confront this threat. The potato park provided a, a, a evidence that how collective uh, management of a territory by communities can respond to multiple crises, to biodiversity, to climate change, to food security, and to COVID-19. So finally on research, we heard from Philippa Ryan at Kew Botanic Gardens, how research on indigenous people's food systems often has different aims, and that we need more holistic approaches that combine different disciplines to better understand and protect indigenous food systems. Participants stress the need for participatory research approaches, which actively involve indigenous peoples and which link traditional knowledge with science. And the need to ensure that the research doesn't just focus on the food systems themselves, but on the broader challenges that they face. And as the Potato Park Quechua experts explained, research in the Potato Park is defined by them and addresses their needs. So I hope that provides a, a good summary for all of you, um, those who weren't there on Friday. So today we're going to explore um, Nashi food systems in southwest China, Lepcha and Limbu in northeast India, and Michigenda food systems in coastal Kenya. These case studies are the focus of a new project funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council. And this workshop will help to design those case studies. Uh, we're still at the very initial uh, stages of the research, but the three case studies build on previous research, including um, participatory action research on biocultural heritage funded by the British Academy. So uh, first of all, uh, we will start with the Stone Village Biocultural Food System Network in Yunnan. This will be presented by Yiqing Song and her team. Yiqing has been a senior researcher and program leader in the Center for Chinese Agricultural Policy. 
and uh, she is also the founder of the Pharma Seed Network in China. So this session will start with a five minute film and then we will have presentations from members of the Pharma Seed Network and also from a spiritual leader from one of the villages, uh, Wumu, Wumu village, that's part of this biocultural heritage food network. So let's start with the film. Mats, can you help us with that, please? Lala 这件事情慢慢地把这些传统批注流失的比较多慢慢的就天气变化的特别快没有一地的下雨和湿度的话就可以解不了半种出来的口感也比较好有四个社区组成一个网络然后遇到了朱坤院的那个循环住址的疫情期间
组织，像神秘一样，呃，丢了一个人，一个人的神秘一样，丢了一组组织的话，所以我一直在保留这个传统品种，这是已经是七年了，一直在做。Thank you so much. That was lovely. Really good introduction. So um, we will move on now to um, the other presentations. Uh, do we have Jaime Yang and um, Mr. He Jixian, the, the Dongba from Wumu Village? Would you like to make your presentation, please? Thank you. Yeah. Now next, I will share about uh, about the uh, Naxi Mountain Community Network. Yeah, um, because uh, the uh, because the video the video Xiu Yun Zhang Rai, uh, she introduced about uh, four village four village. Yes, uh, like uh, Youmi Village, uh, Lakashi Village, Sido Village, and uh, Wumu Village. Yes, the uh, community network uh, is composed uh, composed of four Nashi villages. Yeah, and uh, and they are living in the uh, in the Yangtze River. Yeah, but uh, the four villages they have uh, they have their different uh, character characters. Yeah, so I will show some pictures about the four villages. The first one is the Yumi village. Yeah, in Yumi, here, here are four, uh, here are 83 Nashimoso families living in the Yumi. Yeah, this village is uh, uh, is the first from the Lijiang among the four villages. It, it takes us a holiday from Lijiang to reach the village. And now uh, there are Nai Dongba in 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 Yumi village. Um, their Dongba culture is very uh is very weird to protect it and uh, inherit it, inherit it. So um, um so Yumi Yumi people they can develop sustainable from generation to generation. The key important uh, reasons. Yeah, and the next uh, next village is Lakashi. Yeah, Lakashi. Um, this is a this is a village. This is a village of Nashi Nashi Musu living under Yangtze River, and they believes and they believes in Dongba uh, religion and has their own Daba guidelines. At the same time, Lakashi. Has a relative advantages in geographical location and the uh, and uh, and uh, convenient transportation. The uh, Sto village and uh, Yomi village and uh, uh, Wumu village. Yeah, and the third the third village is Sto village. Uh, this village is Xiu Yun Xiu Yun the hometown. Yeah. Baoshan Sto village is a Nashi village that uh, uh, they set in farming earlier, more than 1,030 years ago. The people of Sto village, uh, they deserve an amazing old ditch and outdoor field uh, system, which nourish more than uh, more than 200, uh, 200 uh, Nashi families and uh, guarantees the livelihood of generations of people in Stowe village. So the last village is Wumu village. Yes, Wumu village, uh, it has a farming, farming mass similar to Stowe village and uh, they have still returns more than 20, 20, more than 20, yes traditional greeners built there is a Ming and the Qing dynasty. And, uh, and uh, in the village, they, um, um, there is a harvest season, the Dongba, the Dongba will hold some, uh, some, some activities uh, to worship the gods. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the farming, the farming worship ceremony, 
also shows the, the abundance of the village. So the four, the, so the four Nazi villages, um, they take us from different uh, perspectives, from the selection of crops, the process of food materials, and uh, to the final production and the distribution of food. They can see the formation of, of their three concepts at every step. Yeah, so, um, so today, I, I think today, the, the, um, the time I will uh, invite the Mr. He Jixian, um, because he uh, is also a Dongba in village, and also he is a farmer in the Wumu village. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so, so uh, in the next time, Mr. He Jixian will share the Nash, the Nashi local food systems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 一个呢就是育一个文化就是育文化来构建的这样一个食物体系还有一个是根据着这个在漫才的历史迁徙中串唱了菜炒食物是人类重要的生计宣传和重要的社会活动内容之一。文化的不断得以发展和传承很大程度上是靠了这个食物的这个不断的方向和获得。文化的传不断的。Okay, hello everyone. I just try to uh, translate the key point by Ji Xian. The uh, Jixian explained the uh, uh, indigenous food systems of uh, Naxi. Actually, uh, he said there's a four part. Uh, the first part is uh, culture, bioculture. It's the culture part of uh, the spiritual and the culture uh, of, uh, of Mosul and Naxi. The second part is the local biodiversity and the local uh, uh, physical contact, specific contact, uh, as uh, introduced already. The third one he mentioned is about the community's networking, because uh, different community in the specific contact in the watershed in the landscape, they they complementary towards each other in terms of food need and food support. Uh, and also in terms of knowledge and the culture, that's why they need net, uh, networking towards each other. This is the third part. The fourth part he mentioned is about the, the communities interact with the outside world, like with the market, with the city, with the uh, outside uh, uh, peoples. So in this, because of this four part, it's not it's in the evolution process. It's it's not uh, fixed, and these uh, systems are evaluated with timing and with the changes day by day. So this is the process. He 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 emphasized that, 
And he also mentioned about that life, uh, food is life. It's everyday life of people. It's very, very important. It's the base of the, uh, of the Nashi culture because of the exploration of, uh, of food and then gradually and accumulatedly the cultures become more and more rich because Nashi and more so before it's just a herd. It's a collect uh, 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 for uh, their food is depend on uh, herding, hunting, and collection. And gradually they settle down and become a farming community. So this is a process. So that's the key point uh, by Na Xi, uh, by Ji Xian. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for translating, Yi Ching. That's fascinating. So. Yuqing, do you want to take over the chairing? Because I don't really know how you want to, to present who goes next and all that. So I'll let you. No, I may just said that even we'll show the photos of, uh, to uh, supporting what uh, Ji Xian introduced already. OK, thank you. So this is uh, photos so you can see. So this is their worship, and then in the Umu village. And they share food together during the harvesting. This is the traditional wedding. This is the way they how to keep their uh, food and last uh, all year long. This is a traditional way. Yeah, this is the uh, old people, they sharing food together and during the festivals. This is the intercropping, uh, uh, pumpkins with, uh, with, uh, with uh, beans, with, with maize, and uh, this very traditional ways of farming. This is pumpkin in the mountain community. This is the traditional uh, a uh, maize uh, flower. This is the moon cake, uh, a handmade moon cake by the community people. This is the uh, farmers, uh, uh, this is a traditional uh, a local variety of maize. This is a wild uh, walnut and they also use for eat the walnut oil. This is a, a, a root of a traditional a, a root of, a, for food in the, in the mountain. This is the, how they make this uh, 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 sugar. This is the way how to they, they make this uh, Potato, okay. This is the uh, chili for uh, exchange it with the city people. <laughs> uh, this is a, a the, the this is a, a momo made by buckwheat flour. So buckwheat is also traditional crop in the in the mountain community. This is a dry vegetable. So this is also the way they keep their food. Uh, this is the uh, kind of turnip. It's a very traditional uh, plant uh, they, uh, in the com uh, communities, which they, uh, they rely on and for as a vegetable and uh, as a, a food in the winter. Mm. Yeah, this is they eat flowers, this is the wild uh, mushrooms, 
uh, they, they have from the uh, forest, a, a lot of different mushroom from forest. So you can see that. So Yunnan have the, this is the uh, pepper. Okay, those are the food from outside. Coffee, birthday, birthday cake. They are all coming in the community also. So as uh, as Jixian uh, uh, mentioned, this uh, community and community uh, connection and also community with outside uh, connection. Gradually, the whole food systems are evaluated like this. Thank you. This is Nashi. Nashi Ward, say thank you. Thank you so much, Yi Ching. That was great. <laughs> I feel hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say a few words and then if Guan Qi and Yifen have something to add because Yifen have also done a lot of uh, indigenous food uh, uh, research and Guan Qi is in charge of this uh, 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 a small project. So what I want to say that I, because I, our key approach of pharmacy network is trying to support uh, indigenous communities, indigenous people. So our, our approach is let their voice, let their participation and their voice directly in the process, not us. So this is important uh, to, to show the film by the women farmers to let Jixian uh, as a spiritual, community spiritual speak, uh, uh, speak himself. It's a pity that they cannot uh, communicate in English directly, so we need to support them to do that. This is the first thing I want to uh, mention that here is that. And from there, from this uh, indigenous food systems uh, uh, project and, uh, uh, and the communication, I really more and more realize that Food, a uh, seed, as a uh, Ji Xin, Ji Xin, and uh, Xiu Yun mentioned, uh, seed is life. Food is the base of uh, their everyday life. It's the base of uh, of the culture of the communities. So it's very, very crucial uh, uh, of the culture of the whole society. This is especially true for the communities, for indigenous people, because they are, this is more connected to their everyday life and the livelihood. Not not uh, uh, not uh, not uh, only money, not only technology, even not a uh, research. For them, it's life, it's everyday life. So I think this need to be, and because of this, they need to dealing with the, all the changes and the crisis every day. And because those dealings is really accumulated a lot of wisdoms and knowledges and uh, uh, and appearances. This is a need to be more support and realized by the outside world. So it's not a, something that a slogan and uh, about uh, uh, on the global can 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 deal with. This is really a uh, everyday life. Specifically, we re we need really need to rely on those local people, those indigenous communities, for our future for the sustainability. This is what I want to emphasize. So. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yu Ching. That was great. So we'll go to the Q and A now. Um, we have one question from NSA Ten Kilos. I'm afraid I don't know who you are, but would you like to say your question so we can all meet you um, in the process? It's Nicholas J. Sagrove. I'm, I'm from RBGQ. I did have a question. I was marveling at how quiet and peaceful those communities seem to be and um, I started to wonder if some of those traditional foods are uh, helping to alleviate the problem or I guess um, those those diets don't create the problem of diabetes in uh, these communities so so my question is is there less diabetes in these communities Thank you. Yi Ching, would you like to answer that for him? Please? Okay, yes. Uh, uh, yes, I can understand your, your wondering and question about this because of these uh, uh, pigs and uh, fat uh, food and uh, like this. But this is a traditional ways because they, 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 
this is really selected this and uh, because their physical labor because they are they go into the mountain climbing the mountain all the times so they need this so the the diabetes is not a problem for them and at the same time they also drink a lot of tea a heavy a, a, a strong tea and also a lot of herb vegetables mushrooms so together it's no problem for them and the pro more programs is that uh, because a lot of migrants are working outside. So those people I have more, uh, more, uh, more programs and they bring back like a high blood pressure, pressure, those kind of things. And some programs are from the pollution, like uh, soil pollution, uh, like uh, more uh, pesticide and uh, fertilizer use and cause some pollutions. Those are the programs. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't see more questions right now. I'm going to ask one myself, if possible, um, to Mr. He Jixian. Um, thank you very much for your words. And um, I was wondering what you see as the main changes that have happened to your to your indigenous food system. What are the threats that, that it faces? And what, what is your vision for the future? What do you think? Um, the pathway should be for it to go in the future. Christina, he said to ask you a question. That is, we currently, uh, now, that is, we, uh, Nasi and Mo said that this, uh, the whole food system, as you just described, that four parts are very good, and it is a growing process. But you now look at, from your perspective, the biggest threat is what? You think that this whole food system, uh, the future of the food system, the direction of the food system, will go in what direction? Thank you, Qian. This is a problem that is very clear. That is, we 这个摩梭，还有这个纳尔新的这个食物体系，它的这个，嗯，得到有这么一个好的构建，它就是经历了一个历史漫长的这个，嗯，经验的积累。而这个经验是来，这个食物的经验是来自于这个对不同食物的这个食物的发现，还有它的种植经验。这这一些，嗯，经验里面，然后创造了这个文化，这个就是文化，就是不断的推动了这个。嗯，这个种植多样性，像这个物种这食物的这个品种的保护，然后这个食物它又，嗯，不断的丰富了这个文化这样的一个关系出来的。但是现在面临的一个问题就是，我们的食物这个品种越来越少了。它只有一个原因就是，嗯，因为这个资本这个市场对这个传统的这个农业的一个冲击，因为过去我们这个食物是主要的一个。功能是照顾人的生活，但是现在已经变成了一个赚钱的工具，嗯，这是一个很很可怕的就是问题。咱说这样一个循环下去，这个定番系的这个食物的这个嗯体系，它会慢慢的会去去消弱它的功能，但是同时它也进来了很多外来的人，一些嗯好的一些食材、一些食物就开始进入这个纳西土的这个嗯生活里面。但是这个生活怎么跟我们这个传统的民族文化结合起来？我们怎么与一种传统的一种，或者是一个民族的情感的方式去，嗯，记住这些，嗯，好的食物，然后把它融进我们的这个食物体系里面？我觉得这是我们未来应该要去思考的一些问题。Okay, I will do the translation of what Ji Xian answered. Ji Xian said the one programs uh, uh, he can say that in the uh, indigenous food system in Nashi is that uh, because the, the food systems, as he mentioned, is uh, uh, the construction is uh, based on the uh, experience and exploration of, uh, of farming and of collections, the food collection and, food, and uh, food crop farming gradually accumulated and become more and more rich and diversified. It's very diversified uh, uh, systems and evaluated uh, all the times. However, and uh, the problem he can see that now in the recent uh, decades, it become more and more uh, uh, uniformity. And the less um, and the diversity are disappearing in terms of crop, in terms of food, food types, and then also in terms of uh, the way preparing it. So that's what uh, he worried that because of the uniformities, uh, 
and then and the less and the less diversity is really which they really uh, threaten the whole indigenous food systems uh, because what is the reason he can see that that because before food is for 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 livelihood for people's life for people's nutrition but now food are considered as a and uh, uh, become more and more uh, marketingized and the food system is for money so that's why the, that's the reason he can see so that what he can uh, he 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 sees the program and the reasons, and one thing that he thinks that uh, the good thing is that for the outside food that and more and more uh, other material from outside and uh, uh, the enter into the indigenous food systems, but how the systems integrated accepted uh, 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 the, the outside food and outside knowledge but in, in, in order to not uh, uh, not uh, destroy its own systems that's the uh, since that he he considered that he should uh, consider more and we need to uh, uh, to do more research up. thank you Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, we just have a couple of questions. We just have a couple of minutes left. So I'm gonna read these out from Philippa Ryan from Q. How important are different types of bean? If you could provide a, a fairly quick answer, that would be great. Well, how different, what a different uh, type of a bean? No, how important are they? Yeah, I just I just wondered what the um, sort of local bean diversity was and how important beans still were today and whether um, that was changing over time as well. You want to uh, ask the Jixian? That uh, uh, has uh, 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 豆类的产品 这个杜类的品种呢为什么这么多 或者是天效雨了，但是又停下了下了雨。然后这个水稻就没有生护了，没有生成了，玉米没有生生成了。这样的时候，我们这个这个区域这个金山街河谷这个区域，它这个嗯，除了这个听天以外，还有很多很多的
in their seed bank, they have uh, more than 20 uh, uh, like soybean varieties and also more than 30 other uh, bean, uh, vegetable beans, uh, uh, pea beans uh, uh, varieties. So varieties are very, uh, very diversified and rich uh, in the village. And why so? He mentioned about that because in the mountain communities, they have a, a, a a uh, terrors uh, for far, uh, for rice and uh, for beans, but they also have some dry land, mountain dry land. They will grow in sea, uh, growing beans, different type of beans growing in the mountain, uh, uh, together with other vegetables and uh, in the in 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 the forest. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, varieties they can harvest in. In some some variety are very late. Uh, uh, have a late, very late uh, growing season that uh, can avoid the dry season. So after the dry season, they can still grow uh, beans. So beans are very adapted to the mountain communities uh, in their community. And because of this, this, uh, this those uh, beans uh, contribute to their food uh, system and food diversified food very much. So with this, those different beans, they they make different uh, uh, food like uh, tofu, like doushi. Uh, doushi uh, is a kind of um, a dry bean and salted bean, and also make a, a different type of bean uh, food uh, are made by the Nashi people. So it's really the beans are really nourish people Nashi people's food system. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. So one last question. Um, uh, I think uh, Yuqing, perhaps you could just provide a quick answer to this. Yes. How, how much work is actually being undertaken in China to protect and support indigenous people's food systems? Are there more researchers and organizations working with indigenous peoples to support their food systems apart from you? Uh, yes, as far as I know, there are numbers of uh, research institutes and also uh, agricultural researchers. They, uh, it is not yet uh, very much mainstream, but uh, a lot of research institutes are put effort on that, like uh, KIB. Uh, Kuiming, uh, uh, Kuiming Institute of Botany and like us and like China Agricultural University and uh, Min National uh, University, uh, 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 multiple uh, teams are in, in, in the last uh, one and two decades are starting pay more and more in, uh, attention to the indigenous food systems and to the diversity, diversify the uh, 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 biodiversity and their contributions. Thank you so much, Yi Qing. Thank you so much, Mr. Hixian and um, all of the China team for all of that. It's been fascinating. I really appreciate sharing all of that fascinating about your indigenous food system. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we're now going to go to um, to India, to Northeast India, actually not that far away from where we were in Southwest China on the other side of the Himalayas. And so um, we're gonna hear about the Lepcha and Limbu food system in Kalimpong in West Bengal. So I'll hand over now to Naraj Gurung and his team who are there. Uh, please go ahead, Naraj, thank you. Okay, namaste to everybody else. Uh, uh, the information I'm going to share pertains to food system of mountain communities with specific references to Limbu and the Lepcha's tribes, Lepcha tribes settled in Lingse, Lingseka villages at Kanchenjunga landscape of Eastern Himalayan region, India. Okay. This area is surrounded by Bhutan. Yes, slide like in the north, uh, Bhutan in the north, Sikkim in the west, while the adjacent forest of the village has been declared as a conservation park in 1993. Since then, their relationship with the forest is in constraint. The villages are inhabited with more than 1,000 households of six major mountain tribes. Lepcha's history of creation, culture, Rituals and livelihood revolves around the Mount Kanchenjunga because of its abundance in biodiversity and their spiritual connection with the land. They never felt necessary to move out of this landscape. Limbus too have a similar connection with the Mount Kumbhakarna, 
situated at the western flank of Kanchenjunga as their sacred mountain. Limbus migrated to Lingse Lingsekha during 1930s. Lepchas and Limbus, sorry, 1830s. Lepchas and Limbus both consider themselves as the blood brothers and often their villages are found adjacent to each other. These two tribes possess a traditional knowledge about more than 50 herbal plants, 36 wild edibles, 13 types of fruit crops, among them six are wild species, and they have the knowledge about the 28 species of the birds. They grow more than eight types of cereal crops, 20 or more types of vegetables, four major cash crops, and around 20 to 30 different types of beans and pulses. Major traditional cereals are maize, paddy, millet, buckwheat, and naked wheat. According to sample survey, 37% of the total lepcha and limbu population is under the age group of 18 to 29 years, 39 years. 44% of the households cultivate in more than three quarters of the land under their position, and 79% of the household income comes from agriculture and allied activities. This is about the Lingse Lingseka village, which I am talking about. Traditional rice cultivation is declining due to the successful green revolution in, in, in mainland India. Rice is mainly grown only to sustain the family's tradition, rituals, for status, and for the interests of the elders. Maize is considered as the king of the cereals. Millet is grown specially for making brew local beer. This drink is an integral part of all the rituals, ceremonies, as well as festivals, and has a significant influence in the social system and well-being of the mountain tribes. Livestock like cattle, pig, and poultry are the pop popular and contributes around 8% of the household income. Meat is an important part of their food. They enjoy occasional hunting and fishing in the wild. Major agricultural operations are connected with rituals, festivals and ceremonies. Rituals of Ubauli and Udauli signifies the phenomena of weather change, migrating of animals and birds and agricultural operations in the field. While performing these rituals, they offer seed grains, fruits, vegetables, fermented millet, eggs, etc. To, the, to their deities. They also release fingerlings in the river. This offering to deities provides food to the tired migrating birds and animals, and in turn, they spread seeds to different altitude of the landscape. Nuangi is another ritual which not only determines the time of the harvest, but also prohibits unmonitored harvesting. Similarly, there are many rituals, ceremonies, and festivals, which not only reinforces the cultural values like reciprocity, solidarity, and equilibrium, with nature, but also contributes in social well-being. Asarko Pondra is the ritual of eating flattened rice with curd. Maki Sagrati is a ritual of eating root crops in winter. It is believed to keep the body warm. Parma and Huri is to work in group with fun and pleasure. Most of the households have backyard garden which is considered as a sacred and serves as a germplasm collection and experimental plot. Some of the aspects that are lost. Over the period of last 40 to 50 years, traditional cereals like dryland paddy, wild millet, foxtail millet are lost from the area. Agriculture related social events like paddy and millet dance are performed only on a stage program due to decline in decline their cultivation. Traditional knowledge attached with sustainable forest use is declining due to reduced interface with the forest and lack of ownership. Knowledge about the birds and animals behavior is relevant in relevance to agriculture practices are rarely passed on to the younger generations. Rituals and cultural events have become an expensive affair and shamanistic priests are rare and difficult to find. 
Only few farmers practice traditional method of seed selection in paddy and millet. Some of the resilient practices are, they continue to grow local land races of paddy, maize, millet, buckwheat, naked wheat, and prosper millet. Some farmers adapted to their cultivation practice by changing planting and harvesting time and follow crop rotation, etc. Traditional practice of seed exchange is practiced within the and between the households, community, and villages. They have intrinsic habit of trying out and conserving new species in their backyard garden. As in when calamities bestow upon them, there is a practice of contribution in terms of cash, kind, and services. This social activity operates through village society, community, organizations, and self-help groups. The community operates in collective manner while utilizing the natural and human resources for agriculture activities. Nutrition and sustainability aspects in the village are, more than 80% of their diet is consists of local food crops and livestock, especially elders love to eat traditional cuisines. They also collect wild seasonal edibles, which has high nutritional and medicinal values. However, there is continuous influence of modern food culture due to increased trend of gas economy. Breastfeeding to babies are common practice. Brewed millet, which is an integral part of the ritual and the festival gives immediate energy and satisfy their thirst, thirst while working in the field. This brewed millet drink is also popular in social gathering for pleasure and happiness. There is traditional practice of preserving surplus vegetables and soya beans. Challenges are changing scenario of local to caste economy, influences of urban lifestyle and food due to aggressive marketing media, decrease in yield rate of traditional crops, younger generations are less interested in rituals, inappropriate developmental schemes of the government. Religion conversion also affects the sustenance of rituals and traditional practice adversely. Responses are consciousness for health and immune system due to COVID-19 effect. Environmental consciousness among social organizations are increasing. Appreciation of traditional food by people coming back to villages from cities and the towns. Demand for traditional cuisines in tourism sector, especially homestay is increasing. Continuation of ritual and ceremony contributes to sustaining indigenous food system. Research gaps, need for integrated local research approach to connect, the, connect and influence the national and international policy dialogue. An investigation is needed to understand the impact of forest conservation park on food system and sustainability of the land race to identify collective measures. Thank you. Can you hear thank me? You very, yes, thank you very much, Naraj. Thank you. Um, that was great. I, I'm just wondering if um, Dawa Lepcha or anybody else would like to add anything from your side before the Q&A? Yes, I think uh, he, he'd like to. Hi, everybody, those who are joining this program, Kamrimo, uh, Sewaro, as well as good afternoon. Limbu, Lepcha, or Limbu, Zatiko, Paramparik, Saskar, Saskitiru, Praya Praya, Mildo Zuldo, Muncha. What uh, he is telling, uh, are you audible? Okay, so wha what he's telling is that Lepcha and Limbu, uh, their culture and rituals are more or less similar. Just the Zatia Khan, yeah, Khanapina, Ani, Mriti Prasad, Las Dafun Gurne, yeah, Dastururu, yeah, Ani, Mon Bunting, Rafaelang Bako, Chatipani, yeah, yeah, Karma Kanda, Dastururuncha, Tio Praya, Eke, yeah, Kisimpo, Uncha. What he's telling is that the culture and the ritual are almost similar from food to the funeral funeral activities, whatever, uh, and the priest kind of priest they use for their rituals. Uh, they have their own priest, 
own Fedanba and Bungting, but uh, they work in the similar fashion. They believe in a similar kind of spiritual field. Uileko samay ma kapur kharule jiyon jiyonu ko jiyon jiyonu ko lagi ninti bonjangal mane prayajastho nirvah gorte. What his feeling is like in in past their ancestors they used to live in the jungle only forest only so they used to eat only the root crops and fruits and I mean their livelihood was dependent on the forest. They were totally dependent on the forest. Even the oil they used to extract from the forest product, everything, they, even medicines, cereals, everything they used to do a shifting cultivation. So, their whole life, I mean, whole livelihood was dependent on the forest. Lepcha ani limbo zati, sister dikhine, prakritik lai, puzne, pairasi bhayeko zati unale, prakritik ko sisti, himal, ya parvot, kola nala, oda, itya diyaru lai, puzne garcha. Uh, they are the worshippers of the nature, both limbo and lepcha. So they worship their mountain, caves, and uh, river. So they are the, both the communities, they are the uh, worshippers of the nature. Yeah. So basically, uh, they have a very peculiar kind of practice of doing agriculture. So whenever they do any agriculture practices, they always uh, offer or they worship the nature. And they think like the land and this agriculture is a kind of a mediator between the human being and the God. I mean, their deities are, yeah. Lepcha limbo ya jati le ya yukura mati bishwas garsa ki ya kheti bali ya kheti bali parampari kheti bali ya garna le ani garna le sisti karta bhagwan ko nazik ya nazik pani yeh kheti bali ya ko karan le hami ya bhay rahe ko chhau mande ra afulai bishwas garne garsa. They believe that by doing agriculture and traditional practice, traditional agriculture, they keeps them near to God. Because all the all the agricultural activities are related to their several rituals, and, and every major agricultural activities are done with the according to the rituals, and they offer uh, fruits, vegetables, grains, everything to their deity. So it is a kind of agriculture is a they are a media for connecting them to the their uh, God deities. Hani lepcha limbo zatile. Khetibadi launa ya lagau ne ya tarika taur tarik ya tarika anusar na nai paramparik anna baliyaru kheti garde ayray kasho. So they have been doing all the traditional agriculture only. So still they are doing traditional agriculture. Just the dan kodo mokai phapor kagoni pangdor junelo ani itadi sak ya sak sabji just ya sak sabji schools. So they have been doing all the traditional uh, cultivation of the crops like uh, millet, pangdur, like wild millet and uh, vegetables, paddy, buckwheat and also they do root crops cultivation. Okay. Uh, Man, yeah, food store ko lagi mota hoy na. Yeah, I'm yeah. You yeah, it jati orle. Ra, ah, yeah, artik ista yeah, istiti lag bazar garna ko nimti. Justo cash crop orlo ma, oda ko kheti, alu kheti, ona chhi kheti, kuchh kheti orlo pani garna garsam. Ah, besides that, they also do some cash crops like uh, large cardamom, ginger, and little bit potato, and also the broomstick. Hani lepcha lepcha ra limbo zati erule jivan jivan ka jivan jivan yapan garna lai katipa yesto ahar eruka nimti 
वन जंगल में निर्भर गर्न पड़ने हो so they also uh, depend lot on the wild edibles and the other is other uh, forest products for their livelihood tara aile sarkar ko kati ya batlindo niyam niti le garda yo hamro paramparik kheti garne taur tarika ra sanskar sanskriti har lai chhati hudai ya aayeko cha but uh, recently because of the several government policies so there are so many restrictions which are actually affecting their uh, performing the rituals culture and their food system everything is being affected by the uh, new policies of the government yahi sarkar especially forest yahi sarkar ko niti nirdhanan le garda aile pray mans ya pray manse le ya mane ya aay srot ko kheti haru cash crop ko kheti haru yo mathi nirbhar garne garcha because of this region the people now are going more and more cash crops tesle garda hamro paramparik kheti garne haru ma kami hudai cha ani aile ko samay ma prayas ya sabai le yo sasto chij bij haru mathi ya mane ya afno vichar ani ichha rakhera kheti ya ya kin bej garne garcha अभी यह खेतीपाती खेतीपाती नाफा और नोकसान हेरा कृषक खेती किसान करने बिकज अफ दिस नाउ दल्टिवेशन अफ ट्रेडिशनल क्रप्स आर रिड्यूज सो दे आर गोइंग मोर ऑन द कैश क्रप्स एंड चिप प्रोडक्ट्स फ्रॉम द मार्केट बिकज अफ दैट द रिचुअल्स आर एफेक्टेड दे आर आई मीन सो मेनी देर लाइफ वे अफ लाइफ हेज बीन एफेक्टेड बिकज अफ दिस पॉलिसी अल्टिमेटली खेतीपाती करने कृषक बाली देखि लल फूल साग सब्जी बोट बिरुआ कुछ फसल को खेती कर पेल मौसम फसल अलग समय में मौसम परिवर्तन को कारण कृषक पारंपरिक खेती कृषक गाड़ो पड़ रखे सरकार ने निर्धारण हमी इंडिजिन्स पीपल ट्राइबल जाति को हित में नीति नियम बनाक यह खंड में यह जाति को पारंपरिक खेतीपाती साथ ही संस्कार संस्कृति रहने बांचने वेन द गवर्नमेंट मैक्स पॉलिसी दे सुड कंसिडर दी द इंडिजिनियस पीपल ट्राइबल पीपल्स कल्चर देयर देयर बिलीफ सिस्टम देयर रिचुअल्स सो देन इट कैन बी कंजर्व अदरवाइज इट विल बी डिक्लाइनिंग एवरी इ हमारे पारंपरिक बिउ बिजन संरक्षण करना एक जगह देखि अर्क जगह यहाँ का कृषक मज में बिउ बिजन को बिउ बिउ बैंक बिउ बोला बिउ बैंक में राखी एक अर् में साटासाट करने जरूरी जिससे बिउ बिजन बाच्न सो दे हेव अ स्ट्रंग प्क्टिस अफ सीड एक्सचेंज which is uh, contributing to conservation of the different varieties and the quality uh pehla ya pehla ko din haru lai bigat din haru lai herera ani bhavishya lai dhyan ma rakhera hamro jati le paryavaran lai bachai rakhna lai srishti karta le srishti gareka garnu bhayeko sabai prakritik sampada haru lai sabai le ko hit ko nimti prarthana gardai aai raheka chhu ani yes lai yathavat rakhnu पढ़ने जरूरी सो फॉर द कंजर्वेशन अफ द नेचर एंड एन्वाइरोमेंट दे हेव बीन अलवेज वर्सिपिंग डू देयर डिटीज सो दिल बी कंटिन्ू टू डू दैट फॉर द कंजर्वेशन अफ द नेचर एंड द इन्वाइरोमेंट फॉर द फ्यूचर जेनेरेशन थैंक यू थैंक यू टोक्सिमो टोक्सिमो Toximo thank you so Toximo. much Toximo <laughs> thank you Naraj thank you Dawa Lepcha that was really interesting fascinating um so we've got a bit of time for some questions now um it was interesting and um sad to hear about the 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 forest policy 
which I think is what you were talking about, the, the government policy, which is affecting forest use and affecting the culture, affecting biocultural heritage. Um, we have um, in the chat um, a couple of questions. So uh, from Sandeep Hazari Singh, are there any moves to revive the millets that have declined? they are still continuing to grow millet, but earlier they used to grow millet in the forest also as a sifting cultivation before 1993. So, but now they are growing in their field, agriculture field, but it will be, it can be further increase its production. People are interested to do that, but it will be better if they, they have the access to the periphery of the forest for growing millet and all. Otherwise in the, their own agriculture land, it's declining every year. But they are meant because of the rituals, because it's so important, this millet is so important for their rituals. And for every ceremony, they make that uh, local brew, like uh, local beer type of big things. It, it has to be offered in every occasions. And people, it has a lot of social implications also. So it's very important that they continue to do, they are continuing to grow millet, but uh, not to that extent they used to do it. Okay, and moreover, you. it's available in the town these days, of course, cheaper quality. Thank you, Naraj. I, I have, and um, Dawa, I have one more question in the chat. Um, so there's a question from Sanjunkta Ghosh. What is the nature of, of seed network in the region and how sustainable is it? He talked about seed exchange within the, the village, I think within the local yes. area, but is there a seed network more widely in the, in the region? I think that's the question, and how sustainable is it? Okay, they have a, a very uh, strong practice of seed exchange, but as such there is no the seed network, established seed network system done so far. We have initiated some seed bank, but it's still in the very much in the orphan stage. Thank you. And we have another question. Uh, in what ways are government policies restricting traditional agriculture from Kathy Smith? Government co forest co policies, the cost of traditional agriculture, the bad for on this. I just to Amila by your Bali Conjo Gonopolagi, hollow Sayo, the hollow for the forest master. I know someone. I mean, I mean, a mall bonoso, jungle water onion, one maracata, a mall of guy, the lamal, a mall bonari. You go to the forest, let's take it with us a guy, or a motherly mall sufficient to then Okay, earlier when they had access to the forest. They used to get a particular kind of wood, which is used for the uh, making the plow, you know, like uh, agriculture equipment. Are, are you listening? <coughs> it's, can you hear me? Okay, so they used to get a particular kind of wood from the forest, which used to make uh, agriculture equipments. That's especially plow. And another thing, they used to keep a lot of cattle when they had access to the forest. And they, these days, because they don't have access to the forest, they are not, many people, they are not keeping their, uh, this plowing bull, you know. So because when there is no bull in the village, 
So the agriculture, the traditional practices are also hampered because there is no animal to plow the uh, land. So Aru? Uh, another thing is like they used to collect uh, biomass from the forest for their, uh, you know, making manure and all. All these things are stopped now. Thank you, Naraj. So essentially, the, the forest is government reserved forest, isn't it? So you're not allowed yes. to collect because it's like a protected area. So, yes. the, so the communities can't collect plants from the forest. So that's why the whole traditional agriculture system is being weakened because they can't use the forest anymore. Yes. And it's harder to make a living now. So, they, so the traditional farming system is threatened. As I understand. Even the, for the rituals, they have to collect many orchid flowers and specific type of plants, which is available in the higher region of the forest only. Even, even the, sometimes they need to collect the water from the different streams of the mm -hmm. forest because they were living in that area since the time they were hunters and gatherers. So thank they used to live much. in the whole region, yes. Okay, thank you. I just have one last question. Um, which species of millets grow in the forest and do they have a different growth um, in this Canada. environment? So they, oh, the no, local I have one name, more question after that. that they have a, that is local name is Pangdur and uh, the Kaguni, which is now, it's uh, almost lost. Thank you very much. And I missed one question from Bobby Banerjee. You mentioned that religious conversations are a threat to traditional culture, sorry, religious conversions are a threat to traditional culture and rituals. Can you provide some examples? Because their rituals, their ceremonies are basically they have they used to worship the nature. When they, when there is a religion conversion in Christianity or in other in other things, so they don't believe in worshiping or they don't believe in the uh, the relationship with the nature. They don't believe or they don't worship, they don't respect the nature's gift or they kind of, they won't believe the whole interaction with the nature, like their traditional beliefs are there. So are there examples of people being con uh, converted to another religion? It's going on. So, are they being converted to Hinduism? So, more on the Christianity. Okay, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, I think we, we're going to need to move on now. Um, it was really great to listen to that presentation. Thank you so much to all of you to Naraj and to Dawa and to the uh, ladies I, there. Uh, yes, please I go just, ahead. I just want to make a statement. I just want to say hello to my Naxi people. They are my supposed to be ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> they say they, that you're not related, Naraj. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, now scientifically proved it is now. <laughs> Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And, and thank you, uh, Lepcha ladies, um, as well. We, um, I don't know if any of you ladies want to say something quickly before we finish the session with you. Okay, now they don't have, but maybe tomorrow after some time. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big applause. <laughs> okay, so finally, we're going to go now to the Kenya case, to the Michigenda in coastal Kenya. And at the end of this, um, can I encourage everybody not to use the chat, you know, for the Q&A, just raise your hand 
Um, you know, I don't want to have to read all, I mean, I don't mind reading your questions, but it's nicer if, people, if we can have interaction. Anyway, Chimuku, please go ahead. Uh, so Chimuku Wakesa is from KEFRI. He's from the Kenya Forestry Research Institute. And um, let me briefly introduce, um, sorry about that. He is um, an ecologist and um, he's been working with the Michigenda for, for a number of years now. And um, yeah, a landscape ecologist. So over to you, Chemuku, and your team. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, everyone. Uh, I will start by sharing some photos. So sorry, so I'm going to, to talk about the Michigander community. And in this case, we are going to focus on Rabai community, which is among the nine Michigander communities. And this Michigander community is closely associated with the Kaya culture. And uh, I'm sharing some photos on Kaya landscape because in the community we are talking about, we have about four Kaya forests and these Kaya forests are very rich in uh, diversity, both for crop wild relatives, medicinal plants, and even other uh, fauna diversity that support community livelihood. And closely associated with the Kayas is uh, the, the governance system, uh, which is led by the Kaya kinds of elders and also traditional ceremonies, which play a key role in sustaining uh, indigenous food systems. Like now the land races for maize, which uh, came to Kenya around 400 years ago, but has been naturalized and is part of the traditional crop varieties that uh, we have within the community. So uh, going back to, to the Michigander community, a brief background, uh, the, the rabbis occupy Kilifi County within the Kenyan coast and uh, the population is about 120,000 people with a, a, an, uh, a population density of 581 persons per square kilometer. And we have about 24,000 households with about five members per household and the poverty level stands at 71%. And because of that uh, high poverty levels, uh, the communities are heavily dependent on natural resources and agriculture to support their livelihood. However, uh, the average farm sizes are decreasing and in the last 10 years, we have seen them decrease from about 2.4 acres to about 2.1 acres uh, per household. And this has implication on indigenous uh, food systems because it means the areas that can be cultivated are going down and down. Despite the area having good rain for amount of about 1,300 millimeters per annum, which can support uh, farming. They also practice a uh, mixed farming meaning that uh, we have crop farming and livestock keeping. And with their culture, coconut beca has become one of the key crop because it is the main income generating source for the community. And therefore there is a lot of coconut growing within the area as one of the traditional crops. But again, we have the maize, we have cassava, cowpeas, a millet, and uh, other crops that are grown by this uh, particular community. We, within the Kayas, we have about 24 diverse species of uh, wild food plants. And these plants have medicinal value, and they are commonly used by the community to supplement what they, they cultivate on land and what they have also domesticated in farmlands. So some of these plants are being domesticated and 
to date we have about six, seven different uh, food crops that are being domesticated uh, in, in farmlands, but which were initially wild in the Kayas. Among these food crops, uh, the indigenous vegetables forms the bulk of that diversity because we have about 20 indigenous uh, uh, vegetable species uh, within the community, among them the wild cowpeas, uh, which uh, of course is being developed by researchers together with the community for, for farming or for domestication on farmlands. Uh, cowpeas, which was uh, wild, has now been domesticated, and we have three main varieties now being uh, cultivated by the community. The other food crops you, fi you find important to the community include cassava and sweet potatoes. And we have also several varieties for this. Like for cassava, we have three varieties. Then for sweet potatoes too, we have uh, three varieties. So the total food diversity within the landscape is about 59, with indigenous vegetables having 21, wild fruits 25, cereals three, uh, sweet potatoes three, cassava three, cowpeas three, and green crumbs one. But the community also do livestock keeping and we have poultry, goats, sheep, cattle, both local and hybrid varieties. But of course, with the, the government policy on food security, we are seeing a number of hybrids being introduced, especially for maize. And about four hybrids of maize have been introduced, two for cassava, and these are having a implication on indigenous food system because they threaten uh, these uh, indigenous food systems. But of course, because of the strong traditional knowledge, uh, the community still conserves some of the indigenous food, but the methods of preparation and processing are being lost uh, because of that lack of effective knowledge transfer from the old generation to the new generation or rather the youth. And this has led to reduced consumption of the indigenous uh, food systems. So how do these indigenous food systems play a role uh, in climate resilience, nutrition, and biodiversity conservation, as well as wealth, uh, well, health and well-being of the community? Uh, we can say that these indigenous food systems are key in helping the community to adapt to the changing climate because the rich diversity provide opportunities for, the, for improvement of existing varieties by harnessing uh, some genes from the wild species uh, of known varieties. An example is just the the cowpeas, where we have now a domesticated variety, which is high yielding, pest resistant, trout tolerant, and which was developed by combining genes from trout tolerance and a high yield from different varieties of wild cowpeas. So with these unique genetic characteristics from wild crop relatives, the, the, the community is able to develop uh, those food plants or food varieties for different species, which are resistant to pests, which are tolerant to drought, and this ensures that they are able to get some yield uh, to ensure there is food security. Moreover, we have these indigenous uh, vegetables being perceived as having very high nutrition value and medicinal value. And the co local community prefer this because of these multiple benefits and also their ability to thrive under now the current weather conditions that are very erratic. But we have challenges facing these indigenous uh, food systems 
And one of it is the pressure on the land resources, given the location of the community, which is very close to the Mombasa, the second largest city in Kenya. We have a lot of infrastructure development taking place, and this is reducing the land that uh, is under crop farming and negatively imp impacting on the indigenous food systems. We have urbanization, modernity, Christianity, social transformation, uh, which are also having negative implication on indigenous food systems because of, of the erosion of cultural practices and beliefs, uh, which are driven by these uh, four factors, the urbanization, mo modernity, Christianity, and social transformation. Then the other challenge is the traditional and the cultural practices uh, diminishing very fast, and these poses a danger to these indigenous food systems because communities associate indigenous food systems with culture, and at, at some point, they are their identity and symbols for the community. So, how are we? Uh, how is the community responding to this? Increased sensitization and awareness of multiple benefits of indigenous food systems through for agrobiodiversity conservation or through capacity enhancement uh, can play a role in helping community respond to the challenges facing the indigenous uh, food systems. There is also pro indigenous food a system policies that can promote this kind of food systems in a way that there is good market, there are also good production technologies and also good preparation uh, methods to ensure that when they are grown, they move from farm all the way to the market and also to the people's plate. So those a uh, good policy that can promote this is one of the responses. Then uh, the traditional governance structure, which is mainly focused more skewed on forest, should also be reformed and strengthened to look at the entire landscape and bring on board more women youth for transmission of uh, uh, knowledge from one generation to the other. Land use planning, uh, which is lacking within the community, uh, is also another uh, response that can be put in place to avoid the negative uh, effects of infrastructure development and the industrialization. I will move on the kind of research undertaken. And to date, we have documented the traditional crop varieties grown by this community and their unique characteristic, carefree working with the community and also Biovacity International have documented this. We have also tried to document those food crops that have been lost or rather those varieties that have been lost both in farmlands and in the wild and documented those innovations that promote traditional knowledge and the cultural practices and which are also associated with cultivation of those uh, some of these indigenous food crops. The other research has been on how we can make the governance system for the landscape uh, strong and how cultural values uh, can be preserved and the aspect of domestication of the uh, wild food crops. So what would be the priority research areas? Uh, the focus will be more on vegetables because they have the, the most diverse aspect of the indigenous food system. We have over 20 different indigenous vegetables so any research within the community should focus on this and more so on cowpeas, uh, which has huge nutrition value and market potential. 
Then the other aspect of uh, research that we need to focus on is on how modernity and the erosion of culture is affecting uh, indigenous food system. And this should be holistic in nature to even tackle issues of agrobiodiversity conservation, both on farm and in the kayas. Then the link between indigenous foods, crops, and the cultural practices, regions, and beliefs needs to be explored more. The other aspect that uh, requires research focus is how a traditional governance system can be enhanced for food systems, because it has been uh, the governance system and the sacred Kaya forest, but the aspect of food system has been missing. And this is something that needs to be uh, focused on. Then assessing the consumption patterns of these indigenous food systems at household level, restaurant and other eateries, because that will give like a, a, a value chain aspect and try to give information on which indigenous food systems are more popular. We also need to identify the existing markets for these indigenous foods, since the markets would be key in sustaining their cultivation by the local community. Uh, the other thing which I have partly mentioned is value chain analysis to look at the market value of, of various indigenous food system along the value chain is more co less connected to the previous point from the farm to the market all the way now to the restaurant and to the household on place. Then documenting the traditional ways of preserving indigenous uh, food system without altering their nutritional value because the community is a traditional way of preserving their food. We need to document this because this information uh, is being lost and that's why there is a gap between the old and the new generation in terms of how we can preserve some of this uh, uh, food system, uh, indigenous food, how we can also prepare them and uh, all those uh, kind of processes. Uh, we, have high, we have a number of research issues, uh, including conducting inventory of this tradition of food that are currently grown on farms and those that are found in the wild and developing some cultivation methods for some of these uh, indigenous foods because some of the issues that came up was how do we propagate them? Because some are just found in the wild and for us to upscale, then we need to see how we can cultivate them and farmers capacities enhanced on cultivation methods, and this will include propagation and multiplication. Then lastly, we need to identify factors that are hinder knowledge transfer on indigenous food systems. Uh, look at the link between the weakening cultural practices and beliefs and the loss of knowledge on preparation of traditional food and at the same time assess the role of women and girls in sustaining these indigenous food systems because they make decisions at home on, on the menu that will come on the table. And if we get their roles right and uh, ensure that they play their role, then we will find most of these indigenous food systems on our plate for improved nutritional value and uh, for improved health and well-being. So I, I wish to stop there. I have my colleagues here who will talk from the community perspective. So I will pass over to Lennox to, to take like five minutes or so and share with us what they have from the community perspective. Thank you. Great, thank you Great. very thank much, Chimoko. Let's go straight to Lennox because we're running a little bit late. Thank you. So they are, just to introduce briefly, Lennox um, and uh, Mohamed Kadilo are the coordinators yes. of the 
there they are. They're the coordinators of the Rabai Cultural Village. Um, so they're going to talk about their work and their indigenous food system. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Christina. And uh, I will take five minutes as Chemoko said, and I will go straight to uh, part one of my presentation. So uh, as a community, we had approximately 60 types of food crops in the past. But now they have reduced to 25 to 30 types because of uh, several reasons. Uh, uh, one being modernized uh, food. And uh, these types of uh, these uh, uh, types of food crops that have been lost, one is sorghum, another one is millet, uh, we had yams, uh, pumpkins, then uh, we had vegetables like, I uh, will just mention this in our language, that is chalakushe. Uh, there was buere, there was chikosho, and uh, there's also traditional mushrooms. There was wombo, and uh, we also had wheel tomatoes that have been lost over the years. And the reasons as to why we've lost some of these uh, traditional food crops, one is uh, weather patterns, industrialization, modernization, and also the government have invested heavily on systemization of using modern methods of farming and hybrid uh, seed crops for good harvest to the locals. So while doing this, uh, the traditional knowledge of farming and its traditional food crops, uh, they have been lost in the process. So that is one of the reasons as to why we've lost some uh, of these uh, food crops. And uh, another thing, uh, there was enough land for farming in the past because the population was low compared to the present time. As the population has grown big and main investments have been started in interior land uh, that was initially used for farming. Another thing, Rabai community, uh, cultural practices and its integrity was safeguarded by a council of Kaya elders who employed a system of taboos and traditional rules to protect traditional food crops, forest and the entire landscape that preserved the seeds in the past. Today, the weak enforcement of laws by Kaya elders during uh, planting season and conservation uh, of forest are uh, coupled with the laws of cultural values that have traditionally been used to govern natural resources uh, have led to laws of traditional food crops and uh, forest areas where, which have crops uh, with relatives. Um, another thing is that the rapid population growth and erosion of culture, cultural values uh, by local communities have caused extensive loss of indigenous food system. And uh, I will just uh, mention a few challenges here. Um, that is one, uh, erosion of traditional knowledge, which has resulted to loss of uh, uh, jumper sum for traditional uh, crop varieties, further threatening food and nutrition security of the rabbi community. Another thing is inadequate awareness by modern farmers, mainly youth, on the value of traditional food crops uh, with lack of uh, mechanism for transfer of traditional knowledge has further resulted to their neglect. And another thing is uh, important rituals and ceremonies conducted by Kaya elders before our uh, planting season and during harvesting of the food crops have been killed by modern education, religion, and weakening of Kaya elders uh, council, which is a key traditional governance uh, institution. And as a result, uh, traditional food crops associated with these ceremonies have gradually been lost. Um, uh, the weak enforcement of traditional laws and the erosion of cultural values and beliefs used to protect the traditional food crops, both on farmlands and in Kaya forest, have led to loss of these crops. And changing of weather uh, patterns, as I've said before, uh, the community has been exper experiencing prolonged uh, droughts, which have been uh, which have affected traditional farming systems. And uh, another thing that I've mentioned previously is industrialization. Uh, the population growth and urbanization 
uh, has led to increased da damage for land, for settlement and infrastructural development, have put additional threats on uh, natural resources and indigenous food system. So as a community, um, these are some of the responses that as a community, uh, we thought they could be put in place. Like one, documenting of the traditional food crops that are available. Uh, another thing uh, is planting traditional food crops available in our forest or homestead farms, uh, domestication of weed plants on farmlands. And finally, construction of a seed bank to preserve indigenous seeds. Uh, thank you for your time. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lennox and Cadillo, for that presentation. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. I think we now all feel a little bit sad because there's so many challenges, but equally a little bit happy because there's also some key responses that, that and research that we can do to, to help. I think there's both in the lecture and Limbo case and in the China and in your case, there are so many pressures. There's, there's a sort of transition period happening now that we really need to try and, and work with these communities to support them to, to sustain the elements of their indigenous food system that are important. Um, so I, I realize we're a bit late with time. Um, I hope with your indulgence, we can stay till five past one. Um, please, the floor is open for any questions. Uh, thanks very much to the Kenyan colleagues for their presentation. My name is Stephanie. I'm uh, from the Center for Agroecology, Water and Resilience at Coventry University in the UK. And I put my question also in the chat because I wasn't sure if we have time. So uh, you mentioned traditional governance um, and that you want to get in women and youth. So this was the first presentation. And I wondered uh, how you would like to do this and if women and youth are involved and participate in community meetings, for example, on uh, land use management. Um, so participate and have a voice, meaning that they are also involved in decision making. And uh, related to this, who's in charge of the various tasks um, around indigenous food systems? And I have to say in your presentations, well, I see one uh, woman sitting there, which is great, but I uh, miss the voices of women. Well, should we ask Leila to answer then, please? Leila, would you mind? Thank you. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, Christina, and thanks for the questions. So about the involvement of uh, women and youth in uh, traditional governance, uh, initially, the Kaya Elders Council uh, comprised of men only, but in the recent past, in view of the issues that are related to natural resource management that uh, women are heavily involved in, it was expanded to accommodate uh, women. So the main challenge currently has been how to get the youth on board, but there have been uh, a lot of uh, sensitization and also uh, some uh, forums that are aimed at uh, transferring the TK-based knowledge to the youth. And also through the traditional ceremonies, the youth are normally brought on board. So over time, they're becoming uh, receptive, but uh, again, with some uh, few challenges, the main challenge is that uh, participation in the Kai Elders Council is mainly voluntary and uh, the youth are more concerned about what they can get in terms of the monetary gains. So strides are being uh, made to bring on board the, the youth, but it's uh, a bit slow. So we are doing more sensitization at the community level and the elders are beginning to embrace the youth more and uh, transfer the TK based uh, knowledge. Uh, the second question on uh, who heads the tasks or who is charged with the tasks related to indigenous food uh, systems. So I would say it's uh, the Kaya Elders uh, Council, but mainly with regard to preservation of the food plants within the Kaya forests. So because of the gap of uh, how to probably find an expanded governance structure that can cater 
for both the farmlands and the forests. Then uh, that is why my colleague uh, Chemoko mentioned that perhaps we need to consider how we can expand the Kaya Council of Elders uh, mandate to include both the conservation in the forests and uh, on farmlands, or perhaps uh, come up with an alternative uh, governance mechanism that can involve maybe the village conservation uh, committees to see how they can, uh, we can include conservation of both farmlands and forests in the wider framework of the landscape uh, approach to conservation. Thank you. Just to add uh, what uh, Leila said, the cultural village within the landscape is also partly uh, in charge of this indigenous food system because that's where we are also trying to preserve some of the food crops that uh, were quickly being lost. And uh, this cultural village is being run by my colleagues who have just spoken and the Kai elders are also members of that particular village. In terms of uh, youth and women, apart from what uh, Leila has mentioned, uh, is also the cultural village which brings the youths more to participate in, in uh, cultural ceremonies and uh, festivals, just to, to embrace uh, the indigenous food because during those ceremonies, uh, the food that is usually prepared is mainly traditional and using indigenous food. Thank you. Thank you very much. So one last quick question from anyone, otherwise we, we'll close now because we've slightly run over. I have a quick question. Uh, really good to hear about the successes of Cowpea. Um, can I ask if that's also met with uh, a, re a renewed or increased interest from consumers? So are there more people buying Cowpea? Um, as well as the the, uh, the new varieties being grown. Uh, thank you, Casper, for that particular question. I think cow peas is a a very popular uh, indigenous vegetables uh, in our restaurant and even uh, high end hotels, and the demand for cow pea uh, I can say is very high uh, that even the supply, the current supply cannot meet what the market is demanding. That's why we are saying that uh, if we can focus more on this, uh, develop the cowpea uh, as a vegetable, then uh, we can contribute to livelihoods and at the same time, uh, promote conservation of the, uh, promote the indigenous food. Thank you very much. Really yeah, and it has many advantages because you can use the leaves, you can use the seeds, both, yes. Thank you so much, Chemuku. And I should have introduced Leila Ndilo, who's a research assistant well, a researcher at Kefri, who is the research assistant on the AHRC project. So I just wanted to thank um, all of the presenters today. Um, it's been really fascinating, um, really informative and uh, wonderful to interact with you. And thank you for all the questions and all the participants. And we will see you tomorrow for, to continue the conversation. So have a good indigenous food lunch, I hope. <laughs> Goodbye.